So this is the iconic photo of the operations room. It's a very interesting space. Um, this was the operations room for Project Cybersyn. It was actually built. So this was, uh, it was located in downtown Santiago. And a prototype of the room, this actual room, um, reached completion at the end of 1972, the very end of 1972. Project Cybersyn was uh, a project that was developed by the government of Salvador Allende as part of his socialist program to try to expand national control over the economy. Um, you can see a system diagram uh, right here. Um, this is just showing different levels of, of production. And then one, uh, one screen would be used to show an image of the factory that was under discussion. Um, it may look like it was uh, very high tech, right? These look like television screens or flat panel display screens. But the way that this was achieved was actually quite ingenious. Uh, it was achieved by placing a series of slide projectors behind the wall. And so the way this worked, the buttons on the armrest would go underneath the chair, um, through the base of the chair, underneath the floor. They would go behind the wall of the room where they would govern the position of the slide carousel. Um, and then the slide that was selected would show up on the tiny screens. The key for letting you know which combination of buttons to push would appear on the large screen that is up top. Um, these over here uh, would be for alarms. These are for the algodonic signals. You can see there's a red, a yellow, and a green. So, so when would an alarm go off then? So for example, if there was a, a problem at a lower level of production, remember how I said an alarm would be signaled, perhaps the manager hadn't responded within the correct period of time, so now it has percolated up to the, the higher level of government. Government knows, okay, we need to intervene. We need to figure out what should be done. Um, the lights, the red lights that were on the side would flash at different frequencies depending on how urgent it was. So this room was quite forward thinking in terms of using light and color uh, and thinking how you could convey the visual in a way that would assist decision making. Chile's socialist experiment was a moment of political innovation. This was the context of the Cold War, so you have the top-down socialism of the Soviet Union on one side. You have the democratic government economic capitalism of the United States on the other side. And in the middle, you have countries like Chile that were trying to pioneer a third way. They wanted to know how can we keep civil liberties? How can we respect our constitution? How can we maintain a free press while simultaneously expanding the control of the state? So it was a really, it was an ambitious, beautiful project uh, that was put in place. The person at that time who was number three in the state corporation uh, that was in charge with nationalization, a man named Fernando Flores, um, decided, well, how are we going to do this? <laughs> how are we actually going to make this process work? And while Marx has you know, theories about how this works, a concrete reality of how you, what techniques you use, that, that's not there. He had learned of the writings of a British cybernetician named Stafford Beer, who had been applying cybernetic ideas to the management of uh, a firm. So in, in the context of looking at how you could run a company, um, so he had applied this, for example, to the management of a steel plant or the management of a publishing company, right? And so Fernando Flores thought, wow, I wonder if he'd be willing to send somebody from his consulting enterprise to come talk to us about how we might think of using cybernetics in the context of management. So Fernando Flores you know, had somebody help him write the letter because his English was not so good, sent a letter off to Stafford Beer um, that said, we're interested in doing this with the economy. We are interested in applying cybernetic ideas. Would you be willing to send somebody to help us? And Stafford Beer received this letter, and it was, it was just this incredible moment. He had been he had been writing about how you might use cybernetics in the context of political change. This had been what he had been writing on in, in this moment. And here there is a young government official, high level government official, that is saying to him, please come, please come to our country and apply these ideas that, that you've been working on. Project Cybersyn was built off of a cybernetic model that Stafford Beer had that was called the viable system model. Um, the viable system model, he believed, existed in social systems, organizations, biological systems that could survive, right? They could survive, they remained viable. 
And one of the examples that he used was describing the human body, right? The human body is a viable system. It survives. It can adapt to its environment. And one of the ways that we can understand that is all of the organs in our body, they seem to function to a degree in an autonomous manner. Right? You're not thinking about what your liver is doing. You're not thinking about what your kidneys are doing. They just do it, right? You're not thinking about your breathing. But if there's an emergency, then you might have some degree of control where your brain can intervene and you can say, oh, I'm swimming or oh, I'm running. I need to change my rate of respiration, right? So under normal circumstances, your skin, your lungs, your heart, they operate without outside interference. And so Beer took that insight and applied it to the design of the cybernetic factory. He applied it to the design of his system for regulating the Chilean national economy. And working with a small team of Chilean engineers, they came up with an approach that would become Project CyberSyn that was social as well as technical and would provide a way for the government to increase its control over the national economy, right? It would give them greater access to the production data as it was being generated. Um, but it also would preserve a degree of autonomy. And a number of the people who came into positions of power during that time were very young. So Fernando Flores at this time, he was in his late 20s, and he had you know, this tremendous position of power to actually do things. So the utopian vibe of the politics opened up possibilities for technological experimentation uh, in terms of technological innovation mm -hmm. um, that few governments would have been in a position to, to even attempt. Mm -hmm. um, over here is a representation of Beer's viable system model. Um, the viable system model was a very central part of Cybersyn's design and of Beer's cybernetics. In reality, very few people affiliated with the project actually understood it. Um, so uh, people have commented to me that they found it strange that such an abstract model appeared in a concrete space of decision making, um, but it, it does highlight the foundational role um, that uh, Beer's viable system model played. So, so President Sabayor Allende was sitting here? I don't know if he was sitting in this exact chair, but he did come in and he did sit in a chair. And he did, the way the story goes, uh, he punched some of the buttons. And it was a very, very hot day. And it pushed the electronics out of their window of tolerance. And the electronics just did not function. They didn't function. They were designing this technology, mm -hmm. which was completely innovative, mm -hmm. had never been seen in the world. Um, was it a neutral technology? So it was a technology that was configured with within an organization and to facilitate certain kinds of communication and exchange within an organization, right? It was to encourage certain kinds of human practices and to enable certain kinds of participation. Now, perhaps it's a philosophical question as to if you got rid of that but moved the technology over if it's the same exact system. I would argue that it's not. And I think something that we often lose when we talk about technology is that situated, contextualized aspect of how technology works. So I would say, no, it's not, it's not neutral at all. The way the system developed was in this context, and the social relationships that were key to the system um, were also fundamental to the functioning of that system. Mm -hmm.